Well, hello everybody, this is Matt and today's video will be about code review of the plugin Debug Stick Pro. If you don't know me, I'm the founder and CEO of MineAcademy.org and I've been making Minecraft plugins since 2012. I've been publishing Minecraft plugins for about a year after that and we've received over 700,000 unique downloads. I've had over 30,000 players on my own network and I've taught 3,000 plus students on how to achieve the same. So I know a thing or two about writing great code and I also know a thing or two about uh, seeing very poor code. And uh, in today's video, we're going to be having a look at Debug Stick Pro, which is a pretty cool plugin that will dynamically display block data about the thing you're looking at in the action bar. And uh, this plugin has been actually sent as a part of our project orient training so the student has joined our live coaching calls that we have twice a week by the way i'm gonna just leave the link in the description i'm not gonna pitch you the training in this video if you want you can check it out and uh, i'm going to be doing an extended review for public because i asked the student if he's okay with that so that everybody can learn from it here because uh, i think his code is pretty damn good but it also can be so much better so without any further ado let me crack into it and for the sake of variety i'm going to be using eclipse this time so i've imported this plugin inside my eclipse and as we can see uh, the packages they are pretty good i can see we are having a great organizations with commands subcommand config display events hook listeners and then mode uh, the only thing i would say is if you are using homogeneous classes so both commands our commands every class inside that package is doing the same which is a command then i would just rename that and delete the plural s and keep it as singular s instead just like this one so command command and then sub command as you can see um, you already have just a singular so just to you know up your coding standards just a tiny little bit but i understand that this student is not a native english speaker so i'm going to be going easy on these naming conventions second thing i see is the language folder this also appears on github so the language folder is a bit strange i i don't i don't know why you're having it here but i would definitely move it inside resources just like this one and then i would actually load it from within the game and we can see that the student actually uses config which is localized and as well as language file which is localized i mean that's great i haven't seen many instances of that but that can totally work uh, however now we have to actually go and look for how you're loading that and make sure that this is dynamically um, loaded so first of all i see we have the main class it's got an instance, it's got a task ID. The task ID I would change to be more explicit. So what task is this? Because I have no idea. And then uh, the on enable, I mean, that looks good. Yep. And then this one, maybe I would just simplify just like this one because it's not needed to, to be that explicit there. And overall, okay, I love this code. This flows extremely well. Yep. On the relo reload is also looking extremely good and then you basically split it into register listeners re register commands i mean overall this is great this is great it flows extremely uh extremely great one small thing i would do is notice that you have this using here use being used here but you're not using it here and i would just make sure that the code uses consistent uh coding practices or coding style so everybody is different some people like to use this everywhere they can some people like to only use this in the constructors and since you majorly don't use it then i would just get rid of it because it's not needed right if you decide to use it then you need to use it everywhere here 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 you get the point so that's one thing just to make sure the code is extremely consistent great i also like that you simplified and you call you have this long call and then you just shorten it and then you call it multiple times that's great if you want to simplify it further you can do something like this one check this out so this this is now an array it takes an array of listeners and then this method is now only called once right and check this out i just call uh, all of these listeners in that one method right so just to simplify it even further. Awesome. That's one thing. Now, let me have a look at the language, what's going on there. So language loader 
it's using an instance this is a single turn great practice i like that and then you're loading it and then it seems like you are just loading the generic language file right here so this is something that there is a space for improvement to say this way so what i would do i would just underscore this language file and make it an en for english and then i would just put it inside the language folder just like this en and then just like this one and maybe it's not a good idea to also translate the config because obviously how will the people be able to pick uh, their language because typically I, I i let them pick the language inside the config so then you'd have to have like a neutral file for example i don't know language selector yaml which looks weird maybe you can help me and come up with a better name and then here you can specify whether I want the English language or Taiwanese, right? And then in the language loader, loader, you'd actually load the resource. You'd save the resource language selector, and then you'd load it as a YAML configuration. And then you'd get the language from that file. So language uh, like this one. So I don't know, this is your file. Let's, let's just pretend that you do the loading right here and then you end up with the en which is english because somebody somebody puts english right here and then what you could do is you can just say new file and then language folder language underscore and then you would implement the prefix as well as for the save resource so language and then like this one and then maybe with the prefix so maybe what you can do you can just get rid of these two you can place them under uh, under the language like this one there we go and uh, now you have simplified it even further and now you can just load it uh, using dynamic loader like this one and obviously if you can't then just throw an exemption and complain to the user that the language they've picked is invalid otherwise pretty good let me just scroll down and see this whoa what is this like this is not bad this is something that i was doing a couple of years ago but i i since discontinued using this because uh there's a lot of work involved if you're manually assigning all of these strings and manually loading them like this one what i now do and i know you have a project orient i leave the link for the course it's a full Minecraft course in the video description and there i teach how to use a model class called uh no it's actually in the settings called language so the language works very similarly you have the local prefix you can just implement it this is by the way open source library called foundation you everybody can find on github so you can everybody can just see the library and if you decide to use the language then instead of doing all that craziness let me actually see where this is being used by changing the name and make sure that it breaks lovely this is being used right here so instead of doing all that craziness and then you have to load it twice basically i would just make it call the language class which you can implement and then you can call an off method or get string and then you'd basically call uh, this one just like this one directly right and that way you can basically get rid of all of that so check this out how much code you save right get rid of all of that and then you can also get rid of this entire language file okay i'm going to just return it because i don't want to have compile issues but this is what i would do this is my preferred way what i recommend right now that people do awesome so that's one thing and then let me just have a look at a couple of other things because there's more stuff that I want to show you guys just to give you more value. I can see that you have a huge sub data class. Check this out. This is a huge class that the person is doing so that when I, uh, whenever I am looking at a specific block, then this class will determine its data and then parse it into a format, which can be displayed on the action bar, right? Which is great. However, if you have a look at all these classes, we can see that they share a couple of stuff. So all of them have a block data and all of them have is using perhaps, and then all of them have the name and then they have get block data, right? And then they have get data string, get data string. Okay. So this is different, but they have, yeah, copy to, okay. Copy to is different. 
next previous that's different that's unique however there's a bunch of things which you can do so instead of making this an interface how about my friend you convert it into an abstract class just like this one and now instead of implementing you need to be extending this there we go and abstract classes check this out they can actually hold these two so i can copy them put it inside my abstract class make sure that when i'm instantiating it i have the block data in the constructor as well as is using and then right here instead of doing all of that you just call super and you just parse the super method there we go and then you can even implement the name right here so i can delete this from all of your classes and then the name can be implemented since this is just being called uh, get class and then obviously the classes that want to override it and return something different they can and even we can call this using and then set is using and get block data and so all of these three can then be implemented in your abstract class just like this one get rid of the override just this one like that and then i can get rid of these there we go so we can save you a lot of code right a lot of code and then this one so you can either make it protected so that you can call it in this class however i don't particularly recommend that so i would just go with get block data just to prevent accidental access uh, when it's not need to be done and there we go awesome so now you can see that we can basically go through all of these so maybe it's going to take you half an hour of work to redo because there's a lot of classes but you can get rid of one two three methods at least and two fields so you're going to get rid of a lot of code repetition that's one thing all right awesome finally last thing that i want to review is the command section so command sections overall your code flows pretty good i've seen code that's terrible this one is a great code so i'm going to give you a lot of credit for that uh one small thing that i would change the strings right here equals ignore case when you're comparing and you're getting the command so if you're calling equals ignore case you're actually wasting a lot of cpu cycles you don't need to do that i would change this strings to command arcs so the standard convention when making bucket or minecraft plugins is to call it an arguments because this is called a command argument not a command string and then right here i would actually go with and i would externalize the arcs zero just like that and i would make a ternary operator uh, which basically will save you this check and then at the end i would just put it to lowercase like this one and then what you can do you can just call if this is empty or if help equals to parameter and right here you can either rework this like this one param equals so you can get rid of the equals ignore case because now that we are being we are comparing things uh using lowercase right or what i like to do i just like to flip it so i like to place param at the end and i like to put reload at the front uh for me personally that's my coding style but doesn't obviously matter for me that's more readable and there's one additional benefit if the param should be null then this is going to throw a null pointer exception however this equals on null works and it will return false however here we are never going to return null right if we would return null right here then you definitely would need to use uh, this syntax right here all right guys i hope you enjoyed this code review if you want me to review your, your code twice per week join my class it's called project orion not only it contains a lot of pre-recorded footage i think now we have 49 hours of pre-recorded footage on how to code micro plugins from complete beginner if you've never touched any piece of java technology if you've never written anything like that before to advanced anti-piracy mini games guis particles custom monsters and all these crazy concepts and we have myself we have myself twice per week doing live zoom coaching calls where you can actually unmute yourself you can share your screen and i can give you a nice code review i hope you've enjoyed this video and uh subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it already and i'll see you in the next video